a huh. birthing pod wow. combo deck. Let's see if he's got any auto kills in there. Looks Nick like Fit like, the, perhaps? Yeah, I see an Academy Rector. Yeah, Nick Fit. And yeah, this is a really interesting deck. He's uh, he's using Birthing Pod going up the chain with uh, really just high value creatures. And what do we have over there? And the other side of the table, Hypergenesis Combo. With You can see as we look in play, Veteran Explorers marching on in to deal damage. On the other side of the table, Michael Belfato with uh, Hypergenesis. It looks like a ley line of sanctity in play. So that ley line of sanctity uh, could be important uh, with that Liliana's ability being target player sacrifices a creature. He's not going to be able to make Michael sacrifice any of the potentially giant creatures that he brings into play with uh, a hypergenesis. And we see uh, we see Justin here with a surgical extraction, two surgical extractions, and an innocent blood in hand. Uh, just coming in again with those veteran explorers and thinking about ticking Liliana up. He does. Discard surgical extraction, it looks like. Yep, surgical goes to the graveyard. And, uh, even with that ley line of sanctity in play, the surgical yeah, extractions can still, still target the cards in Michael's graveyard. So they are still effective. We'll see a fetch land and uh, sacrifice from Michael. Tropical Island and another Tropical Island coming out. And we haven't seen uh, Michael's hand, but this is a deck that can really just... Uh, oh, and there we see uh, one of the main cards of the deck, uh, Shardless Agent, a three mana Cascade spell that's going to look to hit the zero mana Hypergenesis, which allows both players to put pretty much all the permanents that they want to from their hand into play, except Planeswalkers. And uh, Michael's going to be looking to drop very scary things into play. Just going down the list, we see Progenitus, Angel of Despair, Emrakul, and uh, Gristlebrand. More interesting things in his sideboard. He does hit that Hypergenesis, and we'll see what he, we'll see what he can get into play. Now they're going to take turns. Progenitus is the first. And Justin, with a Surgical Extraction and Innocent, innocent Blood in hand, is not going to put anything into Gristle play. Gristlebrand wow. is the next. Gristlebrand and Angel, Angel of Despair and Justin Haynes scoops it on up. Hypergenesis. Uh, taking down Justin Haynes in game two. They go to a game three. Justin Haynes, um, that ley line, a real problem for a lot of his effects that he has, whether it's Inquisition of Kozilek, Cabal Therapy. He doesn't want to be Cabal Therapying himself, usually, unless he's using that Cabal Therapy to tr as a, the alternate cost for the um, sacrifice effect from the graveyard for like uh, Academy Rector finding, say, Pernicious Deed to blow up things. His yeah. other possible targets with uh, Academy Rector is Oblivion Ring, which is a really solid potential answer to one threat. He's also got a recurring Nightmare in here, which can probably do some pretty crazy stuff with uh, Revel Arc, Eternal Witness. Um, he's even got a Thrag Tusk uh, that we're not sure he kept in, but it, it was at least in his main deck. And uh, yeah, you saw, uh, like Adrian said, you saw the Leyline doing good work there. Uh, besides even those discard spells, Liliana wasn't able to activate her minus two to make Michael sacrifice any of those large creatures. If Michael had had maybe one or two less creatures, the Innocent Blood, the Liliana, if he didn't have the Ley Line, might have gotten Justin out of that uh, really sort of unfair combo situation with generally more fair cards. So, Yeah, let's pretend for the sake of argument that there was not... Um, the Angel of Despair in Michael Belfato's hand, and it was just, um, let's say, the Progenitus and that Gristlebrand. Then, on Justin Haynes' turn, he could activate the Liliana, minus two, and use his Innocent Blood to get rid of both of Michael Belfato's creatures. And then, at that point, the, there would actually be a game still happening, even if Michael Belfato drew seven cards with the Gristlebrand. Yeah, and, you know, taking, uh, losing seven life in the process, and he'd already taken quite a few damage from those veteran explorers. And we'll see players uh, getting ready for their opening hands. Who do you think is uh, favorite in this matchup after sideboard? 
Um, I think Michael Belfato was favored, period, the entire way, no stop. Okay. I think I'd agree with that. I mean, you know, Justin has some discard, but those ley line of sanctity are going to really cause a problem. Uh, Justin's abrupt decays, not going to do anything against the fork forecasting cost ley line of sanctity even if it costs zero if you have it in your opening hand yeah now one of the cards that justin haynes is hoping to get in his opening hand is definitely oblivion ring one of the awesome things about oblivion ring for a lot of cards the hypergenesis chain one of the problems with trying to fight against it is unfortunately for you you can't do cards like clone to copy and get rid of, because he does have Phyrexian Metamorph, to copy and get rid of cards coming into play. Oh, Leyline turns zero. Um, to copy and get rid of Legends, but if you have a delay effect, like a trigger from Oblivion Ring, it can come into play and get rid of um, all of those cards, including, um, you know, getting rid... Oh, and we got turn one, land versus... Uh, land versus land we see in Justin's hand. Uh, just a couple lands and Abrupt Decay and a duress so duress isn't going to be able to target michael because of that ley line abrupt decay is not going to be able to take care of that ley line um, a situation that we just talked about justin essentially has a couple of lands and a couple of cards that as far as we can tell right now do do nothing ley line of sanctity a card that i could not believe was printed when it was <laughs> printed you know a lot of people uh really enjoyed the full casting cost versions of this spell before, so... Yeah, previously printed as a card called Ivory Mask. That's right. Ivory Mask has won a Pro Tour uh, in the hands of Bob Maher at Pro Tour Chicago uh, 2000. Yep. Bob Maher, who we may see today in the form of Dark Confidant. <laughs> a very I, popular legacy card. I predict Dark Confidant will make an appearance this weekend um, on the camera. Dark Confident so nicknamed Bob because when Bob won the Magic Invitational, it was the Invitational card he designed um, and now bears his likeness. Yep. You see uh, Michael paying two mana. Looks like he has a Spirit Guide, uh, Elvish Spirit Guide, which he can remove from his hand to produce a green mana. He has a Force of Will. If he does have a Cascade card, we could see a Oh, show and tell works. Or just a show and tell. Okay, let's figure out what we're choosing. I think a uh, green sun zenith drawn by Justin, which he cannot put into play with show and tell. I think we'll just see. Uh, he oh. doesn't even bother looking. Huh. Uh, Michael Belfato wants us all to know he really had it. <laughs> yep, and uh, we see a gristle brown, a gristle brand uh, come down and finish that match up. That was a, a, a quick game three. Hypergenesis, one of those decks that I know I was really impressed by at the Star City Games Open Series event in Madison, Wisconsin, where I'm from. 